So I promised you guys that I would record a demo um, f uh, regarding the DOM uh, handling of the DOM and the handling of events um, because I, I didn't have time to, to do any live coding on the, the lecture. So this is my attempt to do a slightly bigger demo than usual. Uh, it could probably take an hour or so, um, but hopefully we, we could uh, discuss some interesting parts uh, during the demo. So please grab a coffee or something so you can f follow along. Uh, this demo uh, um, is... is uh, we're going to code basically a BART board, I call it. Uh, it's if you know Simpsons, the series uh, where uh, Bart in the beginning of, of the intro, he, he writes on the blackboard, writing what he should not do uh, because he's been not so good. Um, we are doing the same here, but instead of uh, writing for hand, we will have a blackboard in the browser. And when the user um, clicks the blackboard, the blackboard will magically start writing stuff and when we release the mouse bat button uh, the blackboard stops writing that's basically it um, the goal is to be able to have multiple blackboards uh, running at the same time as well as um, being able to um, to to I mean switch between those boards so we click on one we'll let go we go to the other one and click that one and that one should start writing. They shouldn't be writing simultaneously. We need to fix that. So let's start. Uh, what I've done is I've booted up my uh, exercise environment. Uh, I have uh, WebStorm pointing at the exercise um, folder in my exercise library or exercise uh, uh, repo, I should say. Uh, and inside you probably are familiar with uh, the concept, but we have the exercise uh, folder. We have a BART board for, for this uh, assignment or, or demo. Uh, in, in that folder, we have a client. Uh, the client have a debug and a source folder. And as usual, we're only supposed to be writing code in the source folder, not the debug folder. The debug folder is the built code after we have uh, run browserify uh, and uh, copied um, changes from from the uh, html i have actually i could do it like this so you can see i have a uh, a terminal running in another window but i will close that down exit and do it in this one instead uh, you can see I've checked out, I, I'm, I'm in the branch part board uh, and to start watching for changes in those files we run npm run debug. <laughs> and that failed miserably. Oh, we need to log into the Vagrant machine, of course. Vagrant SSH. Like that. And then we don't run npm run debug. Okay, so this starts the, the web server, starts watching for changes, and it crashes because we have a port open, probably. Didn't that one close? I've, I've been experiencing this sometimes when I switch between uh, closing connections and it won't close, and I have no good re uh, explanation why it happens. But what I do is, basically, I, I just exit uh, the Vagrant machine, I do a vagrant halt and a vagrant up, and then it's fine. So okay, let's let's try that. Um, vagrant halt. So it's and vagrant up. S somehow it doesn't seem to be working with when you exit um, in a certain way. But it, it's quite quick to, to, to just restart the machine. Vagrant SSH, npm run debug, and hope for the best. So we start the servers. Now it's looking great. 
uh, and all files are copied from the source folder to the debug folder and it's waiting for changes uh, to be made. So if I change something in the HTML file, for instance, add a paragraph. Hello, save, and we see that uh, the site is rebuilt and the, the, the HTML file is copied. Uh, so we could go to the browser <coughs> Welcome to school Bart, refresh, we see the text, hello here. Um, also notice that uh, in this case I've, I have nap.js in the source folder under js. So this will be my uh, entry point for this ap application in the app.js. Uh, however, the build file will be first of all placed in the folder javascript and second of all it will be uh, named build.js not app.js and we find it in the debug folder under javascript and build.js but remember don't mess around with the debug folder uh, that's automatic stuff so back to the browser if we look and uh, look in the browser uh, <coughs> and look at sources we will if we refresh anyway, we will find a JavaScript folder here. We will find a build.js. If you look in this one, it's a lot of stuff we didn't write. The only thing I've written in app.js is this console.log. But in the output, we get a lot of fuffy stuff around uh, this uh, this console.log. And that's because Browserify is uh, protecting the global scope by uh, by embedding our code in a um, uh, uh, self-invoking uh, invo function. And that's a good thing. That's Browserify Fry doing us a favor. The favor, however, could be uh, not that good if, if, if it comes to debugging, because it could be hard if we have a lot of code. It will be really, really messy to, to find our code in here. And the line 4 in this file doesn't match line 4 in this file. So we have a mis mis mismatch and because of that we have those source mappings uh, making life easier for us. So if we go into the Bart board client source JS, we will find our app JS because basically this line of code uh, tells the browser to, to <laughs> ghost render this, uh, this folder together with this uh, file for us. So here we see that the line numbers are correct. So line three is the same one as we have in, in our IDE. So everything is up and running. I, I when, when I start out a project, I, I, I really like to just do this. Console log test, uh, make sure that it works basically. And, and it does in this case. So we are fine. Uh, we could start working. Of course, we could write all our code in the app.js, but hmm, if you are familiar with uh, courses before, you know that we like to uh, separate stuff uh, and not have everything in one file. Um, and, and it's really not a problem when it comes to Browserify because Browserify will uh, package everything together for us. So. No, no need to, to be afraid of a lot of files, basically. So in this case, we will add a file. And for the first example, I would will uh, um, create a own type uh, in, in, in this module. I will, I will cre create the type uh, Bart board. So I will basically use a, 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 a Big letter in the beginning. What's it called in English? Big letter. Well, well, the all in Swedish anyway. Bartboard. Dot js. So that's our uh, uh, our type that will do uh, all the good things, like that. Uh, in this one, we could, if we like, just start off by making a Bartboard, like that. Uh, say it's a function. This is basically a constructor function called Bartboard, and it will say console.log Bartboard. Uh, we are using Browserify, so we could use the same um, uh, modules, npm modules that we have uh, in the service. So we will basically do a module dot 
exports uh, and say that uh, this part board will be part board like that. So we will export from this module we will export part board but uh, that's not a good thing we'll just have it like that so the whole module is this uh, constructor function in this case going back to app.js we could require this bart board uh, bart board equals require require uh, dot slash because we this is not uh, a, a type in the node modules library this is a own type that is in the js file so we need a dot slash before um, before the type so bart board we don't need a dot js we could write dot js if you like but we don't need it okay um, and then we just do a new bart board like that save being rebuilt go to the browser Refresh, Bartboard, test. That's fine. Everything is working just fine. Okay, so we're up and running. Uh, I have prepared uh, some parts and I've prepared a style.js. Uh, in this we have uh, a board and the board is basically the, the blackboard. So I have already styled the blackboard class uh, in, in CSS and we could go to to the index file. Uh, 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 note, this is a class. Uh, we have a, a div with an ID board. So the, the fourth here is that we will add our blackboards into the, this div uh, on the page. But we could just try it out first without doing anything dynamically. Uh, we add a div, we add a class called board. Maybe this one could be called blackboard. Instead, I think that's a better name, like that. And, and, and observe that when we change something in the CSS, this, uh, uh, the CSS file is copied to the debug folder as well. So everything should be up to date. Okay, we are. Could do it like that. Oh, and we got our Bart board. Nice. Somewhat look like an blackboard anyway. Um, so now next thing is to to get a hold of this one and when I click the mouse something in this one should happen. So let's try to to first connect uh, and set up the event listener. Um, and actually remove the hello. Make space. Uh, Okay, so in the Bartboard, when we new do a new Bartboard, because, I mean, new Bartboard will be called for every instance of a Blackboard on the page. Uh, so we need one event handler for each Bartboard, so we, uh, we could start off actually by just adding an event listener. So, uh, and on what should we add the event listener? Oh, basically it's on the, uh, the div, this div. However, it's not a good thing if we, I mean, give this an ID. We could, we, we could actually try that first and I will explain why it's not a good idea. We call it BB1. Oh, maybe we could get eight BBs, BB8, I don't know. Uh, um, we just a little Star Wars joke for those who didn't get it. Get it. Uh, so uh, we could get it an ID BB1. Uh, in the Bart board, we get a hold of that one BB1. Um, document dot query selector. I'm quite fond of query selectors. I, I use them a lot. Um, just because you only need to know the CSS syntax, basically. I don't need to learn a lot of. Uh, other uh, API methods uh, against the Doom, uh, so so that's a nice thing I think. BB1, so uh, get a reference uh, to the div. Uh, on the div we attach an event listener. Add event listener. Uh, what should we listen for? Uh, we could listen for a click or anything, but in this case we need to listen for the mouse down. So when the user presses the mouse button 
and the cursor is above our div tag, uh, this event listener will trigger. We add an anonymous, anonymous function in this case, <coughs> like that, uh, and just to try stuff out, we add an event uh, parameter to uh, the function because when the browser trigger this event listener, the browser will uh, as an argument to the anonymous function, it will pass information about the event if we like to know which mouse button was pressed, uh, where is the cur cursor uh, located on the page and, and so forth. Um, and it's, it's a basically a good idea to, to be able to, to stop the event from propagation or propagate or uh, stop the default action if we have a link for instance we could do it on the event uh, parameter. Okay uh, let's do something with the bb1 uh, in this case. Um, if we just do bb1 dot text content we just add some uh, whoops content we add some text content hello says Bart. Try it out. Okay, no, no errors yet. I have the mouse over the board and I press the mouse button. Button and it hello says says Bart. Uh, looks like nothing has happened when I click now, but that's because I, uh, if you use text content, you just uh, erase the old text content and add a new one. So it will not uh, uh, concatenate uh, uh, the text in, uh, uh, in the board. Uh, we will figure that out later. But somehow it works. We have an event listener added to the div. Okay. Now let's take a look at how we did this. So we had a BB1. If we want to add eight blackboards on this page. We need to go to the index file, we need to create eight divs with a last div with an ID of BB8. Uh, that That's really not a good thing to add IDs with uh, incremental values in them. When If you're doing that you're probably doing something wrong. Um, a better thing for this part board is that if we could just tell the constructor function that uh, this div, the board div, is where it's supposed to render itself. So we just need to call Bart board telling it to okay render yourself inside board for instance. Uh, and the Bart board will create the div for us, no need to, to go into the index file and add them uh, and it will uh, after that be able to control this uh, div without having to query it from the doom because it created it. So let's try that. We remove this one, uh, the div. We just have an empty uh, empty div here called board. Go into the app, okay, we call new Bart board, send in the ID of this board, go into uh, the JS file to the constructor function and we receive this uh, container is a pretty good word for this, I think. So the container will be the out div in this case. So instead of querying uh, to get this uh, div, we create it. And we do it the old fashioned way using uh, document.createElement. Uh, it's a div, document.createElement. Um, what is it we are going to create? The div tag, uh, like that. Okay, fine. Uh, on this one we need some attributes, so set attribute. <coughs> we need a... Uh, do we really? No, we don't actually. We have the div, remove this one, uh, we create a div tag uh, and we add the event listener to the div tag. Instead of bb1 we add it to the div and the div's content is say hello Bart. I will get rid of all of those JS, CS errors. 
doesn't like how I write my code. And after we have added the event listener, uh, we add the div to the DOM, so it will render for the user. Uh, and where shall, shall we add it? Yeah, we will add it in the container. So container data pan child. We want to add it at the far end. And what are we adding? We are adding the div. Okay, try it out. Hopefully it will look exactly the same, but it didn't. Type error. A container append child is not the function. Oh, of course, this this one is the ID. It's a, it's only a text node, right? So we need to to get a reference to that text node uh, first. So our container container equals document dot query selector. Uh, oh, that's not so nice, but okay. Like that. Or even better actually. We will not use query selector. Oh my god. We will use document got get element by ID. The old classic. That's nice. Uh, so we get the reference to the container, we append the div to the container. Okay, try it out. Oh mm, nice, almost. Ah, it doesn't show up. Why doesn't it show up? Because we have no class on it. We needed the class blackboard. Uh, how do we add a class to a div? We use the class list uh, 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 property. Class list dot add blackboard. So we add a blackboard class to the div. Yoo um, and to be sure it looks nice, we could actually go into the body, go into the div board, and there we have it. We have the div class blackboard looking all fine. Oh, should we try it out as well? Oh, it works still. Nice. Okay, so instead of doing this, just adding uh, static text, we want to add uh, a sentence, but the sentence should be written out letter by letter. Uh, like we are writing on the blackboard. So first of all we need to specify uh, the sentence and I think it's a good thing to to be able to write different stuff on different boards so probably good thing to to uh, to pass uh, the sentence as a uh, argument to the board constructor. Um, so we do it like this. Oh let me pause for a second I will get you a sentence that's pretty good. Actually, I don't need to get it. I used to have to write it because I remember it. Um, new Bart board. I shall not pass. No, I shall not pollute. Pollute. How is it spelled like that? Pollute. 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 Pause. Back. Whoa. It's correct. I shall not pollute the global. Scope. He's been naughty. He's been polluting the global scope, and you shall never pollute the global scope. Um, back to the board. So we have the container. Next thing to do is to uh, to to have a paref parameter for uh, for the sentence. Call it text. Something like that. So that's the text we could actually just write out. I, I, I like to try out stuff all the time, because if I write a lot of code and don't try out the code, I don't know where I did wrong if it don't work. So I, I like, especially for, for you guys who haven't programmed a lot, I, f I think it's a good thing to test a lot. Uh, uh, also notice that if I get a, a syntax error like that, save and try to build it, uh, the, the browserify uh, um, build will fail and you will get a quite good look here what you failed on. And in this case I failed on those guys. Save and everything is okay. Just yes, reload, click, I will not pollute, I shall not pollute the globoscope. Great. Uh, 
but we need to add those letters one by one and not in a chunk like this uh, and we want to add them like first letter, second letter, third letter, fourth letter in a sequence like that and when we have something that will be done with a certain amount of time between it we shall think of timers and timers are just another event so um, it, it, when the timer triggers it will add a message to the uh, event loop um, and, the, uh, and the JavaScript then you will read the message and do what, what it says. Uh, and in this scenario it doesn't matter if, if I mean if we set that every letter should be written with 200 milliseconds apart if it's 205 or 210 it really doesn't matter for this uh, application so I think it's a good thing to use timers or intervals and in this case maybe an interval is the the, the best way uh, because we are doing something over and over and over again all the way until the, the, the user releases the mouse button uh, so let's try it out we could actually do it inside this uh, event listener function we could set time set interval uh, interval takes two uh, arguments the first argument is uh, what we should do it's actually the opposite against uh, event listener more or less uh, the function that will trigger is the first argument function and the second argument is after uh, how long uh, or how, how 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 far should it be between um, the triggers, uh, how many milliseconds, and we can. I think it's quite long, but we could try out a, a second. So every second, this function here will run. Uh, and what should happen when the function runs? It should add one letter to the blackboard. Uh, using closures, we have a pretty good, uh, easy easy time to get the div. We, we get it because of closures, we could get the container and stuff, we could add other uh, uh, variables um, in the Bart board, uh, like uh, maybe a letter to count which letter we, or maybe a variable uh, responsible for counting which letter in the sentence we are about to write or have written. Let's do it, let's call it letter and actually let's initialize it to zero because we want to write the first letter uh, with index zero uh, first of all uh, to get a letter out of um, a, uh, out of a string we could use uh, the get char uh, or we could treat the string as an array uh, maybe that's an ugly way to do it because then you are led to believe that the text actually is an array, which it's not. Uh, I think we use the get character. Isn't it called get character? Of course it's not. It's called care at in JavaScript. Nothing less. Care at. So text care at letter that will give us the first letter. And let's see what happens here. Going to the browser, refreshing and pressing down the mouse button and nothing is happening. Okay, why is it not? Ah, we're, <laughs> we're just, just reading the letter, nothing else. What we are supposed to do is to actually add it inside this div so we could there's a lot of s ways you can do this actually but we could do it like text content we 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 add it to text content and we first of all take the old text content uh, I I will tell you why this is not a good idea, but uh, we could do it like this for status text content. We add we we read the last text content and then we add this character to the old text content and we write it into the new content. Okay, that would work, I think. It does not. Oh, it does actually. So now you see it's starting to like 
doing this railroad here. Nice. Um, and it works and it's quite chunky. It doesn't actually, it's quite slow and it just keeps on going forever and ever and my uh, computer will soon get hot. Uh, doing this and this causes a lot of re-rendering. Um, especially if you do it in a loop. Uh, in this case, actually, we need a re-render every time we do it in this an interval, so it's not a bad thing, actually. Um, but in this case, we could actually, instead of reading from the DOM, I mean, if you can avoid reading from the DOM, uh, it's better if we just have this uh, text stored inside Bartboard, like var uh, board text. It's an empty string from the beginning. Instead of adding it directly to the text content like that, we could just uh, board text uh, does equals Uh, the character letter. So, so basically, we take the board text and add a letter at the end, and then we take our div dot uh, text content uh, sets it to board text like that. We saved one r one reading from the DOM once every second, and that's I think good good thing in this case. Um, we're not incrementing the letter, so letter is zero always, hence the, um, um, the railroad pattern. Uh, we need to add uh, one to the letter all the time. Letter dot equals one. So for every interval, we add one uh, letter from the sentence. Okay, reload. I pressed the bottom board text. Board text is something completely different than board text. Where do I have board text? There, board text. Press down the mouse button. I sh uh, shall. Ah, oh, nice. It's quite slow though. Doing it this every second. Uh, let's not. Let's do it every 200 milliseconds. We could actually add a parameter speed as well to the um, to the construction function if we like. This is better. I shall not pollute. This is more or less not realistic, but it's pleasant to watch anyway. Okay. Great. The sentence is over. Do we think that the interval has automatically stopped? No, it has not, because this interval here will continue to trigger and trigger and trigger and trigger forever and ever and ever and ever. So uh, uh, we have a bug in our code, uh, the event listener is never stopped, and uh, this will cause a headache uh, later on, so we actually need to stop the interval. Um, <laughs> okay, let's tell you what's happening here. So, 30 minutes from now, the recording crashed. So, now I'm back, we're doing it all again, uh, or actually, I redid it all again. 40 minutes uh, recording without the microphone. So, third time, third time's a charm. Um, let's let's uh, do it all again, but the positive side is that I'm well rehearsed now. Okay, so I left off uh, uh, actually yesterday by uh, having a problem with the event handler. I think I'm back to that point right now where um, if I release the mouse button uh, this text will just go on forever and ever and ever and that's not a good thing. Intervals is, uh, is, um, is dangerous in, in that way that you could accidentally um, miss to close uh, an interval that just goes on forever and ever and the only way to stop it is to reload the browser. <coughs> and this takes resources and m might 
uh, happen in the background, uh, trying to connect to servers and stuff. So be be really really careful when you are using the set interval. So what I've done now, okay, I've added a variable called interval ID that uh, we will use to save the ID of this interval set here. Uh, so we s the set interval uh, function returns an uh, uh, an ID interval ID, and we could use this ID to to stop the interval. So if I would do something like this, <coughs> uh, clear interval, send in the interval ID. Uh, Try it again. Uh, we see that we only write one letter, uh, then we stop the interval and it will never trigger again. Uh, we don't want to do it like that, we want to do it when we release the mouse button. So, uh, because of that, we need to add in another uh, event listener <coughs> in this house. In, in this, this time, we use a mouse up. Mouse up. Uh, so, when we release the mouse button, we should add a function uh, like this. Uh, we will see this have some floats. Um, clear interval again. The timer ID like that. Okay. So when I release the mouse, mouse button, the interval will be cleared and everything is fine. Let's try it out. <coughs> Down, up. Down, up. Seems to work pretty good. There is, however, a bug in our code right now. I will lower uh, the refresh rate uh, just to make sure that it's a little faster. But if I if I press down the mouse button on the div, it will uh, trigger the mouse down uh, event. But if I then move the mouse and releases it outside of this div, uh, let's do it again, release, then uh, the interval will not stop because we added the event handler to the div. So if I do the mouse release on another element, uh, the interval will never stop and we have this bug that that will go on forever and ever. Um, to fix this, we actually don't need the mouse to be released on the div. We are okay if the mouse is released anywhere in the document and by that we simply write document instead. So we add the event list to the document itself instead of adding it to a specific element in the document. Okay, down, up, down, up, down, up, and so forth. And we get a bonus. So I press down here, I move it outside the window and let it go and we see that the event is triggered uh, wherever I release the mouse button. Nice! Uh, when Bart writes on his blackboard, he wants to repeat those sentences over and over again. Right now, uh, this letter is just incremented. It's never reset to zero, so we never start over again. Uh, a simple if, if statement will fix this. So we uh, we look if a letter equals uh, text text dot length. Uh, if it do set letter. Uh, oh, equals zero, uh, like that. Reload. Yay! Works like a charm. Uh, this is not uh, beautiful. Uh, we should have a space uh, in between the uh, sentences. Uh, we could, if we like, we could of course add it here problem solved, but that's not the, the beautiful solution. A better solution is to, to make sure that this text uh, always have a, a, a trailing uh, 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 a trailing white space. Uh, and we could actually add some default text as well, so let's do that. If text is undefined, we're using the default operator. If the text is un undefined, we add a default text. You shall always, well, always pass the text argument to the Bart board constructor. So no need for an exception here, <laughs> we just write it on the blackboard instead. Uh, and if um, uh, we add the trailing space as well, we could do it just adding a trailing space, but in this 
place, I think it's a good thing to trim it first, just to make sure that there wasn't a space to begin with. So if the user adds a space, we remove the space and add another one. Uh, and if there are no sp no uh, white space in the end, we just add it. Okay. Whoops. Try it out. And see, I try out all the time just to make sure I don't mess something up. Okay. Uh, just so you know, I will <laughs> continuously uh, uh, stop my recording just to make sure that this chunk is okay. I will do so now. So, the next thing we are going to uh, talk about is uh, uh, those two lines of code. I am religiously uh, uh, fanatic about putting, uh, not putting HTML code into the JavaScript code, and we are going to separate. I, I've talked a lot of uh, a lot about this on the lectures that we are supposed to separate uh, style sheets from JavaScript from HTML content, and by doing those two lines, line 10 and 11, we are actually mixing HTML inside of the JavaScript. If we want to replace this div uh, with a, a p tag or something, we need to go into JavaScript and add uh, or modify the JavaScript code. If we want to add an attribute for accessibility purposes to the div, we need to add to the class list here in the JavaScript code. And in some cases, I mean, we have interaction designers coming into our projects, uh, caring about the, the look and feel of the application, writing CSS code, writing HTML code, not so fond of JavaScript probably because they haven't learned it maybe. So they want to uh, hang out in the uh, HTML file in the JavaScript uh, or in the style sheets. But by mixing they need to be able to read, understand JavaScript, uh, alter a line here, uh, rebuild the program project using Browserify and all of those stuff. Uh, and we want to avoid that. In this case, it's a simple div with one class. It's not the end of the world if we leave it here, but I would argue that the better solution is to, to move it uh, to the index.html instead. So we are going to use that by using so something called uh, templates, and we are using uh, W3C's templates, the, the standard way of implementing templates. However, uh, beware, um, some browsers have no support of for templates. With some browsers, I think I mean IE, uh, and I don't think Internet Explorer ever will get support for templates. Uh, however, the new version, Microsoft's new browser Edge, has built-in uh, support for templates from the beginning. So if, uh, if if you're fine with not using Internet Explorer at all or supporting Internet Explorer at all go ahead and use templates. If you are in a project where you need to support IE, you should look at some alternatives like uh, underscore templates, mustache, handlebar, JS. There's a lot of J a lot of template engines you could use, use instead of the built-in templates. But in this course, we will try to use the W3C standards uh, uh, as, as much as we can. So, templates, where to add them? We could add the template in the head or anywhere in the body. I tend to like to place the, the templates really near where they are supposed to be used. In this case, the template is su supposed to be used inside of the div ID board, so I also place the template here. Uh, I give it. Uh, I don't give it an ID. Uh, sometimes you need to give it an ID. I don't feel the need because we have an ID on the board, so I could use that ID to uniquely identify my template. Uh, inside the template, we added the HTML code that we're supposed to have. have. Bart board. No, blackboard. So, this was the code needed in this template. Not much, but it's something. But it's really easy for, for other persons to, to get involved in the project, add an area, a class for accessibility, or whatever. Okay, now we need to rebuild this piece of code. Uh, and we're going to rebuild it using the templates. So first of all, we need to a reference to the template, and that's nothing uh, strange about that. We just make a variable template. We use, once again, the query selector. Uh, I will use the query selector all. 
I will get the board. Uh, Dave, I would get all templates inside the board. I know it's only one. I'll get the first one like that. So now we have a reference to the template. Um, to be able to alter the content in this template, we could use template.content. So the content will point to the document fragment inside of the template. If we look in the browser, uh, refresh the page, uh, look in the div ID board, we see the template tag. So the template tag is actually recognized by the browser. It's, uh, it's in the flow, but it doesn't uh, 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 it doesn't uh, touch anything in the flow, it doesn't move anything, it's just there. And inside of the template we see we have something called a document fragment, and it's the document fragment I get the reference to, uh, to when writing template.content. But this document fragment, it's, it's a completely separate document from the one we are working in, so, so the, the, the content of this document isn't rendered uh, on the web page. It's it's somewhere behind all of this. So we could actually write false HTML code inside a document fragment and that won't uh, render, so the render or trigger the browser to uh, throw an error or something like that. So if we, for instance, add an image um, and the image uh, points to an image that don't exist or don't have a source attribute, we won't get a warning about this because the, ser the, the browser will not try attempt to, to fetch that image because it's in this document fragment. However, what we want to do is to get this div and copy it, copy, copy it and or clone it and place it in the div ID board. Uh, that one is still there. Why is it? Didn't I save? No, I did not and I did not reload. So. Um, this code was still active. Okay, so let's clone the template content. And we do it by a, 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 a function called on the document called import node. And import node will you use when you, you try to import another document fragment into to this document. So because template content is a document fragment, we could use import node. We could also in this case uh, uh, say that we would like the first element node like that. So what are we doing? We are importing the first element node and the first element node inside a document fragment is the div we are interested in. in. We're cloning it. We're cloning it with true. That means deep copy. We can see if we get a, a different behavior if we don't. Um, and we assign it to the div. So the, this two lines of code should replace those type two lines of code. So this will give us the cloned div node and we set the event listener and <coughs> later on we add it to the container with the pen child. Let's see if it works first of all. No, it does not import node. Fail to execute on document parameter one is not type node. First element node, it doesn't look right. right. First element child. Of course, first child, but first element child. Uh, so that if we look at the template, we the template itself have it has three. Oh, where is it? There, the document fragment here have. Oh, we need to stop the debugger. Okay, stop the debugger. Debugger. Okay, like that. Uh, if we look at um, uh, the the template, could we get a better look at that? Where is it? The template. The template had. Ah, I'm lost. I don't remember what I was supposed to show. Ah, whatever. Ah, we could do it like this. If we get the, uh, the the template content first of all, we had to watch for that one. Hello. What's wrong? Why will you not work? No. Uh, we see the template.content gives us the document fragment. The document fragment has three 
child nodes, where the first one is a text node, the second one is a div blackboard, and the third one is a text node. But that's because we have some uh, empty space, uh, uh, some um, um, breaks and stuff and tabs in in the document, uh, like that, for instance. And this one is the one we want. Uh, if we are using the first element child, we get that one, or we could use the collection children that only gets us the element children in this case. That was what I wanted to show. Okay, we removed this line of code. Could we try it out? Yay, still working like a charm. And now we have separated HTML from JavaScript. It's really, really easy to add an area. I have no idea what that are doing, but I mean, it doesn't break our code. So, so it's quite simple for us to to modify the HTML now. So this is a good thing, actually. Um, I think we should try something out. I mean, we are doing new Bart board here. Why not try to add another one like that and use the default text to see that that works. Yay, we got two. And this works because we have done everything in its own scope. So the text and the, the letter and the events are all handled inside this Bartboard function and it's in its own scope. But it looks quite silly that we are using new in this case. We're using new Bartboard. And why are we using new Bartboard? Hmm, maybe because we want to use this inside the Bartboard uh, to, to, to get hold of our uh, objects that are created, or maybe we want to use prototype methods uh, to be able to preserve memory um, and that kind of stuff. But when we look at it, the only thing we do is code in the constructor function. We don't have a prototype method. We don't we don't use this anywhere in our code. So why are, is this a type? Actually, it shouldn't need to be a type, and it doesn't. If we uh, and you, <laughs> basically you are not supposed to be able to do this on a type or on a on a constructor function. Just call it without new. Uh, but in this case, you will see that it actually works. And, and that's because we are not using this. We are not using the instantiated object. We are not, we don't have a need for the object after we have created it. It's self-contained and self-running. So in some cases, you don't need to, to make types at all. And in this, in this case, we would be better off by just exporting a create function, uh, getting a required abort board, Bartboard.create and we get a board and we are fine and off we go. However, in some cases you would like the types and then you really, really need to look up, uh, look, uh, look for, 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 for uh, or have a knowledge of what this actually um, is. And if I, I, I mean, an, a simple example, uh, this dot public text. Bart board says hello. Oh, I. Say hello. Bart board say hello. Says I, 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 I spell like crap in English. Yes, so you know. Bart board say hello. No, that, that's Bart board. Bart board. <laughs> that's spelled correctly. Anyway. Um, so we made public uh, public text, uh, public uh, property on this type. Oh, great. So now we could actually uh, make use of our, uh, well, not like that, uh, our Bart boards created with new var bb1, var bb8, uh, bar, var, like that. And we could do a console.log bb8.public text. And we could try it out. Bartboard! So now we are using the, uh, the text, uh, public text. Great thing. But OK, so say we want to use that public text inside the event listener, for instance, or inside the interval. Let's try it out. So inside the event listener, before we are setting the interval, 
uh, on uh, when we s or actually inside the interval. So every uh, 50 milliseconds we would like to console.log <coughs> this dot public text. Well, shouldn't be a problem. I mean, the the public text is a property on on the object. This should reference the object. I mean, after all, we're inside the Bart constructor, right? So this should work fine. Or reload. And it says undefined. So it logs, but it says undefined all the time. So every 50 milliseconds, it logs undefined to the, the console.log. And uh, why is that? <coughs> yeah. This in this context, this is not uh, what this is supposed to be. JavaScript. Some say JavaScript failed here; that this is broken somehow. Others say it's a feature. It's not how JavaScript works. This way, deal with it. I say try to avoid this, um, because what really happens is when this anonymous function in here. It will be called every 50 milliseconds. It won't be called by the constructor function. It will be called actually by the window object, the global window object, because set interval is a um, function on the window object. But we don't need to write window dot because it's global. But we could write window dot set interval if we want to be clear. So actually, when this function is run, it's called in the scope of window. So this will point to window. Let's try. Just just log this instead. And see, whoops, it locks the window object with all of its functions and, and stuff. So inside <coughs> the set interval this points to window. And that not that's not what we would it would like it to to point at. We would like it to point at the instance that has been created some way back in the time. There is a ugly fix for this. That's quite usual, and you should know it because you will see it from time to time. And it goes something like that equals this. That. So what happens here is that now using closures, we the inner function here will. Uh, get a closure of the outer functions uh, and somewhere in this chain uh, of uh, scopes we will have a reference to so this that and that that is the same and and speaking about this and that in english is <laughs> really really hard this is much easier in swedish believe me uh, and because that points to this this that I in this scope points to this so by writing it like that, reloading, we see Bart board. So everything works like a charm. This is quite an ugly way of doing it, but you will see it all the time. You will see something like self or ugly way or ugly way. It's a perfectly fine way of doing it, but I mean, using self or that or whatever isn't that beautiful. If you would like to do something like that, I would instead recommend that we alter the scope uh, for this on, on, on those functions. So first of all we could use a function called bind and bind will uh, like call uh, it will create a new function with this set to a specific scope uh, and we use it on a function uh, so this function here is ends down here we could at the end apply bind like that and and tell this function what in what scope it should be called that or the new bound function in, in, what this inside that function should point at uh, and we send in this now we have a problem though because this outside of this set, set interval is what this is inside of of the event listener and this inside of the event listener is what triggers the event and in this case it's div so writing this here or here is the same as writing div hmm. 
how do we fix that? Oh, of course we could back again, do with that equals this. Instead of sending in this, we could add that, like that. We render, everything works like a charm, perfect. Uh, and we could actually do the same thing on this function. The outer, no, this function, the event listener function that ends down here, we could add bind this even there. And then if we do it like this, this inside of this function will reference the right this and there is no need to use that anymore. Yay! And everything works like expected. So by using bind we could tell um, we could tell an event listener or an anonymous function or every function we like to be run in a certain scope and uh, in this case uh, it's the scope of of the instance. Uh, however, first of all bind look out for browser compatibility especially IE I guess uh, it won't work in every browser it will in the future of course but not now uh, using this do we do we really need it in this application no we don't we don't need this at all so why do we have it we should not so we just remove the bind try it out works perfect remove is there a need for calling new no wasn't why not do it like this then? Barkboard, we name it Barkboard. We say instead of calling new in a type, we set Barkboard.create. Barkboard.create. Like that, we need to alter this one. We don't need a constructor function anymore. We, we create. <laughs> oh my god. And instead of exporting the Bart module, we could export an object we like with create, set to create. No, Bart board is not defined. Rep. 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 Wrong. Like that. Reload. Everything works fine again. And this actually. Uh, concludes my demo. Uh, it's been a long demo, especially for me, uh, like four hours or something like that, but I think I've stressed, stressed some things that I think in, is important when you're about to start uh, coding JavaScript in the browser. First of all, separate, separation of concerns to make sure that your styles are safely hidden in the style sheet, that your JavaScript code is modularized or some way, somehow not uh, polluting the window uh, object. Uh, we are using Browserify in this case <coughs> to do exactly that. We add the script and this actually I, I want to show this as well. We are adding the script build.js in the bottom of the page. Uh, if we were supposed to do this, add it in the beginning of the page instead. Let's see what's happened. Oh, nothing is working. Cannot read property content of undefined. Oh, why isn't this working? That's because this script is self-invoking, meaning that a Browserify will make sure that when it's loaded, it will start. And when it's loaded, the page haven't rendered. So when we try to call the ID board, there is no ID board because the HTML for, <coughs> for the Doom has not been yet created. A solution to this is to add a defer attribute, uh, which will work in modern browsers. Uh, what, what it says is that when the, 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 the intep, intrep, interpreter, oh, hard word, uh, uh, hits line 12, it will start download the build.js, which is a good thing. It will then continue to render all of the page, and when the page is finished, it will run the script build. So with this construct, we could bring back the script tag to uh, the head actually and this might be a good thing because now the script will build as the page r uh, will load as the page render um, however browser compatibility look out for it
another thing, if we don't want to do it like that, we could actually uh, move it here. Remove the defer, now it's broken. And in the app.js we could add an event listener. And there is a special event listener. Uh, window punct add event listener we add an event listener on the uh, on the window object and we call it load like that and we place our code in that event listener so what this says is um, when the window ha ha uh, is finished loading it will trigger this on load event and our code will start run. So now it doesn't matter where it, the script is placed. Uh, however, beware, if we place the script here, the browser will still, in this, uh, uh, like it's now, the browser will actually stop rendering the page. It will fetch the JavaScript build.js, which might take quite, quite a few milliseconds to do. And then when the, the script is, is fetched, it will uh, run it and it will run and set up this event listener and then it will continue to load the page. So if we have a, have a, uh, a long uh, response time for the server for instance the, the, the page load will stop uh, and that's not a good thing but it works like a charm. Uh, so you could, you could use it like this with the event listener you could have uh, all safety message, uh, little measures to add the defer attribute as well and place it up here like that or if you want to be on the really really safe side you add it in the bottom and do it like this and we are fine so that's an important fact as well and that's why scripts are always uh, put in the bottom of the of, the, of the, the browser because that that approach works in every browsers back in the time so so you don't need to, to be thinking about backwards compa compatibility and stuff so that was one thing that's important, separate it all and after that make sure you understand anonymous functions uh, that you are able to, to add events like this rem uh, and uh, um, stuff. Oh, one thing about bind, I, I forgot to say, but if you're using bind like that Actually, a new a new function is created. So a bound function is created. It's not this anonymous function. That makes it so that if we would try something like this, remove or uh, mouse down. Oh, totally screwed up the spelling. But however, uh, if we at the later stage would like to remove this attribute. Uh, or remove this event listener, we cannot if we are using bind because bind actually creates another function called a bound function. So um, if you're if you want to remove the attribute uh, and using bind, please be av be aware uh, of the problem in that case. Uh, may also make sure you know templates. I think it's an important thing in the course and that you are also able to create elements without a template. That you are you know what document create element, document create text node, uh, if that you are certain of what get element by id do, what's how query selectors work, working with the DOM and adding event listeners are crucial to this part of the course. So please read in the book, read at uh, various various uh, websites uh, just to be able to to get your head around events uh, events and the doom handling. And by that I will actually finish up this long recording. Sorry about that. Uh, it's it's long. Uh, some of you guys may may appreciate it. Some of you may run it on uh, double speed or something, and that's totally fine. I will keep on recording demos uh, for uh, uh, solution files for 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 the other exercises in the course. But please try to 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 do this exercise yourself. It's a good good practice. Uh, uh, or just try to do some of the the e exercises in the course by now. It should be be time for that. So have a good one.